actually really scared, but I'm actually going to be doing the cinnamon challenge right now, and probably did not wear the best clothes today to be doing this. I'm wearing white pants and a shirt. It looks like I'm going to Easter dinner. Easter egg hunting. I don't know. But I'm going to try the cinnamon challenge now. Basically, you take a teaspoonful of cinnamon and you try to hold it in your mouth for 60 seconds without coughing it back out or vomiting. There's some pretty good YouTube videos that are online of the cinnamon challenge that are pretty funny. I'm not sure how this one's going to turn out, but I'm going to try it. Okay, so I got my spoon. I got my water too because I'm definitely going to be needing this after this. And the cinnamon. Yes, I got the Walmart brand of cinnamon. Don't judge me. So I'm going to try this now. Okay. Try to do everything on camera here so no one knows. Ah. Oh my god, don't get this on the floor. It's carpet. Okay, so I got my spoonful of cinnamon here. So, alright. Here goes. Oh, fun. I'm not choking like a lot of people do. The thing is, is it's drying my mouth really badly. It sticks to your teeth. It sticks to your tongue. It completely coats the inside of your mouth. And your throat. I don't know if this is a good thing or not. I'm very sick this week with a sore throat. But at least I'm not choking and gagging like most people do. I've noticed on the videos though that when they go to take a drink of water, it's usually when the bad effects start. We'll see if that is the case for me. Here it goes. Alright. About 30 seconds in. And it's really painful. All right, it starts stinging when you put water in your in your mouth. So obviously, that has something to do with the gagging reflex that most people tend to have. I'm going to actually try this again using more cinnamon than I had before. It's going to take hours of brushing to get all this off my teeth. But now I have a heaping spoonful of cinnamon. Let me ready the cap on my water because I'm going to really going to need this. Okay, cinnamon challenge, take two. <sighs> oh. <coughs> 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 Definitely worth the fucking home. Out there. This is good. This is terrible. Look at my cat behind me. Man, what the hell is going on with me? <coughs> Mm. <coughs> mm. It does not feel good. Believe me, don't do the cinnamon challenge. If my offers to pay you, don't do it.
Yeah. It really coats the entire inside of your mouth. Alright. Before I finish this video, I'm going to go brush my teeth. Because this is disgusting. And I'll never buy cinnamon toothpaste ever again. But I don't. It also was Ash Wednesday. Just this past week, which I think is still kind of funny that a lot of people just have no clue what Ash Wednesday is. There's a funny story, a couple of me, actually this has been about 10 years ago. I just moved to Florida from Virginia. I'm originally from Bluefield, Virginia. It's a very small town. We don't have that many Catholics there. So, we're small town people. Very few people know what Ash Wednesday entails. And we had never seen people with, you know, ash on their forehead. So it's kind of foreign to us. My nephew, Brad, is also from Bluefield. And we both live in Tampa, Florida now. Well, it was one day we were at the 7-Eleven. It happened to be Ash Wednesday. can't remember what year it was. Like I said, it's been about 10 years ago. And he was going in to get beer. And every single person in 7-Eleven. I mean, it is Florida, so there's a lot of Catholics here. It was all Hispanic people. All the people that were in 7-Eleven had ashes on their forehead. And Brad comes out to the car and he was like, something really strange is going on. I think it's the end of the world. Because everybody that was in 7-Eleven had ash marks on their forehead in shape like a cross. I think it's a mark of the beast. Both of us had no clue what Ash Wednesday was. But we'd been noticing this over the course of the day. This was late afternoon when we had seen this. So it was really creepy. It was scary as hell. We, I think we were going to Walmart or something after that. There, everybody had ash on their heads too. So we were freaking out at this point. We thought that this was Armageddon. This was the apocalypse. And that horrible things were about to happen. So we run back home. And we're telling everybody, oh my god, some strange things going on. Everybody has these marks on their forehead. It's like 666. And one of our roommates at the time, Joanne, she she's Hispanic, and she was like, no, it's a religious thing for Easter. It's like Ash Wednesday. And it took us actually being told a couple of times by other people that what Ash Wednesday was before we actually understood it. And then it made sense because we always heard of Ash Wednesday and never really knew what it was about. Well, that, at that point, we knew what Ash Wednesday was about. And we were so, so embarrassed that we didn't know what this was about. So now every year, when I see somebody with ash on their foreheads, like at the airport, because we work at the airport, we don't think twice about it. But one of my Facebook friends the other day from Radford University, we were roommates in college. He's actually from right outside of D.C., the suburbs of D.C. So you would think he would have a little bit more exposure to Ash Wednesday than we did coming from Bluefield. But I noticed that he posted on his Facebook too something weird was going on that people had like these this stuff, these dots on their forehead, this ash. And he wanted to know what was going on. And his friends actually had to tell him on Facebook, too, that it was Ash Wednesday. But there's still a lot of people that have no clue what Ash Wednesday is. I thought it was just us at that time, but I thought that was a pretty funny story. Okay, so it's about 2 o'clock now on Friday, February 24th. And tonight I will be going with a couple of friends to go see La Caja Fault tonight downtown at Straws Center. If you haven't heard of it, well, I'm sure all of you have heard of The Birdcage, which was the movie adaptation that took place in America. Like, they changed the location and everything for it. And it starred Robin Williams. Well, this is the original. It's the French play. And basically, it involves some politics and drag queens. Seems like every time I do a video on YouTube, it's either 
doing reviews of RuPaul's Drag Race, Drag Queens, or talking about in my daily vlogs what I'm going to do, and I'm going to actually go see a drag show. It's the play tonight, Lakasha Full. But probably won't be doing a review on it on YouTube. No, that's going to be the next question I'm going to get by email, but no, I'm not going to do a review on it. But I will let you guys know if I enjoy it or not. Still cleaning cinnamon off of me. After that cinnamon challenge. And it doesn't feel good when it gets in your eyes either. It burns and it stings. So, kids, don't do the cinnamon challenge. And don't get the cinnamon in your eye. It's bad for you. Oh, my kitty. Come here. I was going to try to put my camera... Get my cat on camera, and she ran from me, so, but, maybe I will I'll try to pick her up. She doesn't like to be held. She is, she's a loving cat, like, especially at night, she'll rub and bump heads with me and everything, but she doesn't like to be picked up and held. She doesn't like all the electronics I have around here, either. She doesn't like my iPhone, she doesn't like the Android phone, which I actually mailed my sister, so I don't have the Android anymore. So everybody that was making fun of me for having three telephones, I now only have two. I have my work iPhone and my personal iPhone. So technically I only have two phones now. No, well, technically I still do have the Android since I will be paying for the Android phone. My sister would just be using it, but basically in order to get this iPhone, I couldn't simply trade in my, my Android and get the iPhone because my Android was still under contract with Sprint. And to pay for an iPhone for Sprint, the size that I wanted was 64 gigs, it was going to be like $900. But if I opened a new contract and added a line, I'm going to lose my voice. <laughs> I've been sick. Like I said, I've been sick all week at work. But um, if I would actually been able to open a second account with Sprint, then I could basically get the iPhone. So that's what I ended up doing. I, I got the iPhone 4S, and I still kept the Android. But when be, um, like I said, I mailed it to my, my sister, so she'll be using it. And I'll just be paying for it until August. And then I'll be either be able to drop the Android phone She'll still be on my family plan, though, but can either get her a 4S phone, upgrade it to 4S, and then I will get the iPhone 5 if it's out by that time. I mean, if it's worth it. I don't even know if it's going to be worth it or not. We haven't heard any specs about what the iPhone 5 will, will include. I really want an iPad 3. That's coming out in a few weeks. My stomach really hurts after doing that. Or eating all that cinnamon. I think I can understand now why on a lot of the cinnamon challenge videos that people upload, you actually see them throwing up. Because they actually swallow all that cinnamon and it does hurt when it hits your... dry heaving, but it really, really does hurt your, it hurts your throat, and it really hurts your stomach. <laughs> I'm really nauseous right now. Ugh.